Um, hello, I think I'm giving. Uh, so first of all, I would like to thank uh, Simons Institute and Simons Foundation for this great opportunity to spend the term uh, here. It's really exciting term. So today I'm going uh, to speak about joint work with uh, uh, Johan uh, Kuhnemann and. <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> yeah. And Justin Todd. Justin is here. So uh, it's uh, from University of Waterloo, Canada. So I'm going to speak about computing nucleolus in cooperative matching games. So let me first define the problem. Um, we are given a graph. So we are given a set of nodes and a set of edges. And um, we also given uh, age weights. So for each age, we have um, uh, a non-negative weight. Uh, and uh, as in game theory, usually one has, one has a value function. So for each uh, subset of nodes, uh, we are going to have some value. So we will have a function mu, which assigns a value to each uh, subset of nodes. In our case, uh, this function would be uh, as follows. It's going to be a maximum weight of a matching. M is matching in the subgraph of G induced by S. So you can imagine that you have the following problem. You have uh, players, say going to be nodes, players can uh, close contracts between uh, each other and uh, the possibility to have a contract is described by a set of edges. Each contract will bring some profit. This is the weight. And each coalition ha can gain together such value. So uh, if we, so let us assume that we have additional assumption, then each player can uh, close at most one contract. Then each coalition which uh, will have maximally this profit which they can get. So what would we like, I hope the problem is, cl is clear. Like uh, we have graph theoretical thing and like serious interpretation game theory. So, so the players are the nodes? Yeah, the players are the nodes, the contracts are the edges, each player can close at most one uh, contract uh, weights as the profits and uh, how much profit a coalition of players can get is described by this value function. So what would we like to get? So uh, in cooperative game theory, we usually assume that all players will work together. So together, they will uh, get uh, the max weight of a matching graph G. Like, so now our task is to distribute this gain among the players. So this notion is captured by uh, uh, allocation. So we call uh, a vector x in RV an allocation if it satisfies two properties. First of all, it is non-negative. And second, it is that the value assigned to all players is equal to the uh, value Sorry, it's usually denoted by nu, but my nu is not different from v, so I chose mu. So uh, is uh, equal to the total uh, profit uh, of all players. So we would like to distribute this total profit among players. I hope it, so. That's going to be the objects at which we are uh, looking. Okay. Um, so, um, of course, if we have such uh, an allocation, we, for each coalition, we can compute how happy is this coalition with a given allocation. So, for, we can basically compute the following value. For each subset of nodes, we compute the difference uh, which uh, says how much did we assign to this coalition minus how much this coalition could have gained on themselves. This would be how happy the coalition is. So if this value is positive, that the uh, subset of nodes S uh, is happy with the location because they couldn't have done better if, uh, altogether. If this is negative, then location they're not happy with 
Is it clear? Like, so for each of the subset of nodes, we can compute how happy this subset of nodes is with our given allocation. So this is how much we allocated to the given subset of nodes, minus how much they could have gotten if they f like separated from us all and formed uh, and played only together. Okay, so given uh, like uh, here two sets excluded, the whole set V for this is going to be zero. X V minus mu of V is equal to zero by definition, and the empty set is excluded for it's also zero. So now uh, let us sort this. Uh, so we have all those entries. So for each subset of nodes, we can compute this value. So we will sort them in non-decreasing order. The subsets. The values. So for all subsets of nodes which are not empty and not the whole set, we compute the thing and then we sort all of them in non decreasing order. So um, this would give us the following vector. It will give us some vector, let us say epsilon 1, epsilon 2, and so all epsilon 2, B minus 2. So basically, uh, uh, I hope the construction is clear. Like, so we, for, if we have allocation, we compute all possible, like how all coalitions are satisfied. Then we sort them in non-decreasing order. So basically, here stands the unhappiest coalition among all, all of them. Then here stands the second unhappiest coalition among all of them. Then here stands the third unhappiest coalition among all of them, and so on. Uh, so uh, this vector we will denote as excess vector like that. So we have, for each allocation, we can compute such a vector. Okay. Allocation, okay. Uh, so now I will define what is the nucleolus is. So nucleolus is basically, if we consider the allocation, which gives us lexicographically maximal vector. Epsilon. So we would like to obtain lexicographically maximal vector here. So we would like to make our unhappiest collision as happy as possible. Subject to that, we would like to make our second unhappiest collision as happy as possible. Subject to that, we would like to make our third unhappiest collision as, uh, as happy as possible. So what is nucleolus? It's basically arg lex psychographical maximum of theta of x. This is called nucleolus. Okay, so what is known about this problem? So nucleolus was defined by Schmeidler in, uh, I think it's early 70s. Schmeidler defined this in early 70s. Then uh, there were some advances on how to compute the nucleolus for cooperative matching games. So, um, uh, f like uh, uh, polynomial time algorithms to find nucleolus. Are there some other condition on this allocation function than these two? Because I could just set x arbitrarily large except for for v, but we don't care for v because that's not included. Uh, I mean, this is vector in rv. You do not choose. This is like vector in rv. You do not give values to each uh, subset of nodes. You give. This is a short uh, annotation for summation, okay. sum. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there have been several uh, uh, um, advances of this topic. So first of all, um, uh, in 94, so we mostly Rockman, uh, uh, they gave an algorithm when G is bipartite and weights are identical ones. Then uh, Paulusma, uh, Kern and Paulusma They give uh, an algorithm when G is general 
and weights are identical ones. Uh, then Paul Luzma further generalized that to G in general and weights not weighted. So uh, I missed some results, I ask for apology, but spiritually this is the most general case which one considers. We have general graph, but the weights of the edges are defined by some not potentials. This is uh, spiritually, this is a frontier. So for those graphs, they provided a polynomial time running algorithm to compute nucleolus. Some version of the problem part? Uh, we will, so, uh, uh, thanks. It's a great question, no. So we showed that, um, I mean like for cooperative matching games, no, we showed that, but some versions of the thing are hard. Uh, so we showed that, um, um, uh, we can do G general, W general, and that's my top bond. Okay, so um, first of all, I should have said it in the beginning of the talk. Uh, I have to ask for apology. We do not use extended formulations, but we use uh, polytop. We, we have some compact description of some polytops, but they're not in this, we don't use additional variables. Uh, we really need basically polyhedral structure. And um, um, so the proof consists of two parts. In the first part, one provides a like, compact uh, description of some uh, um, polytop or one can interpret it as studying a structure of this polytop. And the second part is really implementing a classical uh, Mashler scheme which is known in uh, uh, game theory. So I'm going to be focusing only on the first part. I'm going to show the ideas. The second part, uh, one knows how to do that. I mean, you, one could figure out what one, one does one need and we'll write it down and then it will work out. So uh, let me speak about the first part, about the polytop which we will consider and the polytop for which we will provide a compact linear description. So we would like to find a location which provides us a lexicographical maximum here. Lexicographical maximum here. So I hope everyone knows what this lexicographical maximum is. So uh, to give lexicographical maximum, of course, we have to put this value as large as possible. This should be put as large as possible because we have to find a location so that the unhappiest coalition is as possible, uh, as happy as possible. So let, let us find, let us write down the LP, uh, which gives us the first value. So uh, if uh, one thinks for some time it's going to be uh, uh, such LP, so we would like to for each coalition, uh, have this value big O equals an epsilon, for all S in V. I included back two sets. One can assume that they are back in. And the total assigned value is the value of the whole things, and we have non-negativity. So uh, this is the LP basically to find this first entry. We would like for each coalition uh, the difference to be at least epsilon, and we would like to maximize this epsilon. The total assigned, and those two things are coming from the definition of allocation. The total assigned value is the value of the grand coalition, and everything is a negative. So this is our LPP. Okay. From here, it's not really hard to move further because we can move even further. We can simplify these things. We can, uh, because our problem has very matching related structure, we can rewrite this problem. I don't assume you to see that immediately, but one can rewrite this problem in terms of matchings. Of M. M big O equals an epsilon for all matchings M. 
x of b is equal to mu of b, and x is bigger or equals than zero. One can uh, uh, turn back to the definition here and rewrite it. Uh, uh, so this is going to be p uh, one. So this is if, if for some set s, there would be someone who's not in a maximal matching, you would just remove him. Yeah. Basically, it's exactly the idea because, like, the worst thing will be on the p everything matched. Yeah. Uh, so, like, uh, if one, th yeah. So, one can say that p and p one, uh, p one, they have same value, and also, and same uh, optimal solutions optimal solutions. Uh, it's not going to be hard to see. So this is going to be, a, we will denote this part by, sorry? It may be hard to see, there. just people may not see. But ah, no. Sorry, physically it may be hard to see, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I, black, I think that it's recorded still. So, and this I will denote by P1 epsilon 1. Sorry, I missed something. What is X of M? X of M? Over there. Uh, so basically, I immediately put the weight of the matching. I said that the X of M, so this is going to be the sum of the edges. Yes, thanks, that's a great question. So it's going to be X of M is going to denote sum of the variables uh, in, in indexed by nodes matched by the matching M. Thanks, yeah. X of M here is going to be a sum of the nodes. Okay. So now, uh, basically, this polytop, P1 epsilon 1, the set of optimal solutions, is exactly the polytop which we want to study. Because we know that our nucleolus is going to maximize epsilon 1. So it's going to lie in P1 epsilon 1. So the... Uh, uh, starting point now for us will be to study this polytope P1 epsilon 1, which describes uh, uh, the optimal solutions of both P and P1. Erase this. Uh, and uh, actually, we, we would like to start with a dual of uh, uh, the LP P1. But it has quite strange form. So I will write combinatorially what objects will we consider. We will consider the set of matchings is going to be uh, the set of matchings so that xm minus wm is equal epsilon 1 for all x in P1 epsilon 1. So basically, uh, we define this as a set of optimal solutions. So now we would like to find out which constraints are really important for us. Constraints are here indexed by matchings. And we would like to find out what matchings really stopped us from getting larger values. And like, like intuitively, these are going to be exactly those matchings, which uh, which getting the tight value for each optimal solution. So for each optimal solution, they are really tight. Okay, I have five minutes. Um, so here, okay, so here, the trick is going to be to consider the point from relative interior of, uh, relative interior of, P1 epsilon 1, which we can compute efficiently, and then reformulate this set of matchings, which are tight for all optimal solutions, as follows. Mean x star minus w transpose y, subject to, and use Edmund's formulation of the matching polytope. In V, 
y is non-negative and y of e of s is smaller or equal than s minus 1 to s subset of nodes, so the cardinality is odd, and the cardinality is at least 3. Yeah, so basically we would like to study the matchings which stop us in uh, LPP1 uh, from getting better values. And how we can do that, we can just uh, take the point from the relative interior of the optimal phase, like P1 epsilon 1. Then those matchings M stars are exactly the matchings where X star M minus WM is equal to epsilon 1, if we take the point from the relative interior. Then, uh, using this fact, we can say that matchings M star uh, correspond to vertices of the optimal phase of this LP. And here we use really, so for us it was crucial to use Edmund's characterization of the matching polytope, uh, which I hope um, makes sense immediately. Like it says that every node is matched at most once, uh, like all edge variables are non-negative, and that in each uh, odd uh, subset of nodes we cannot match all uh, nodes together. So uh, from now on, a uh, crucial property for us is this de uh, description, namely how the optimal phase of this uh, LP is defined. So you know that optimal phase for the LP will be defined by setting some of those constraints at equality. So we will set for some vertices, let us say V, those constraints to equality, for some edges, uh, those constraints to equality, and for some uh, odd, odd sets, those constraints to equality. So we, we will pick uh, things to set at equality for optimal phase. So first of all, I, I would like to say that we can assume that this is equal to the empty set, because otherwise problem will immediately become too easy. Those constraints are not really important for us. And here we will assume by standard argument that this forms a laminar family. We will uncross them. Okay. So I started five minutes later. Okay, good. Um, oh, by the way, just some trivial thing. Epsilon one is it always at least zero. No, if epsilon one is at least zero, then it's easy case. Epsilon one is going to be negative. Like if epsilon one is bigger equal than zero in game theoretic sense, it say it said like core is non-empty. In graph theoretical sense, it says that max uh, weight of a matching equals to max weight of a fractional matching. So this situation is very nice. The case which is really difficult is when epsilon one is negative. Thanks, it's a very good question. Uh, so, uh, the, now we, I would like to say some words about uh, um, those sets which are from Lamina family. Uh, so, uh, Lamina family basically uh, let me simplify it further. Like in Lamina family, we basically can choose uh, inclusion-wise maximal subsets which do not intersect. I will, I will just, I'm not going to give definition. We will just pick some sets uh, which are inclusion-wise maximal. Maximal in the Lamina family L. So now, now we are able to prove so the key for us, really the key for us, is to prove the following fact. For each x from the optimal phase, so in particular for nucleolus, we will have two properties. First property is that if two nodes, u and v, belong to the same set as i star i1 to k, then the deviation from x star value is the same. V, sorry. So, ba so basically all nodes in the inclusion-wise uh, maximal sets in the lamina family behave in the same way. They all start to deviate from our uh, relative interior point by the same amount. It's very nice property. And second property 
is that for all edges U V, um, so that uh, H does not lie in E, so that the H does not lie itself in any inclusion-wise maximal set for any I equal those edges corresponds to happy coalitions. So the assigned value minus the value of this edge is non-negative. So those two key properties are going to be, will give us possibility to find the nucleolus. So basically we took this polytope, which describes optimal solutions here, and we wanted to exploit its properties. We went through the relative interior point of this polytope, which we can find efficiently. Then we formulated like matching problem for the function uh, generated uh, by this relative interior point. And from there, we already could characterize the whole polytope P1 epsilon 1. I think I'm, uh, yeah, I think. I think that's it. I will stop here. Thank you. Questions or comments? Uh, what about all these other algorithms? Are they also used? Uh, using LP type methods or they're combinatorial? Or? Uh, right. Uh, actually, it's a good question. They use LP type methods. So here, I, I, actually, yes. So they arrive at this point, like they arrive at this point. From there, they look for, like here in the node weighted case, they basically take Edmonds Galai decomposition, which they can compute, and then they work, they play with that. But unfortunately, for general weights, it doesn't make much sense. Like if one considers Edmonds Galai decomposition, it would not bring us anywhere. So they arrive at this point, and at this point, they construct Edmonds Galai decomposition, and they know how the matchings look like. For us, those matchings would not work, which they consider, yeah. So, so for what other classes of cooperative games you can compute the nucleolus? I think there are convex games. I think Barahona uh, had recently a paper on STPAS, uh, like algorithm for nucleolus for STPAS uh, games. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I prob yeah, I mean, there are. I, I would probably not be the right person to ask for the full list of results. Other questions or comments? Good, then let's thank Kosti.